This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, I'm with an interesting case here. This is a 60-year-old patient scheduled for a routine cataract surgery and a topical anesthesia. But we realized that he was very anxious and later realized also that he has an alcohol use disorder. He has received oral anxiolytic but doesn't seem to be helping him much. So we raped him and we decided to give him post-septinous anesthesia. 1 ml of lignocaine is injected. patient keeps jerking his eyes a lot as the surgery is begun but over a period of time i am hopeful that he settles down well the capsule is stained the ovd is introduced into the eye time to perform the rexus my initial plan is to do the two stage rexus but as i begin i assume that the capsule is not that tense and i've changed my plan and now i'm doing the whirling or the spiraling technique so it seems to be going well and just before the completion this happens well it was quite disappointing to say the least in hindsight i thought i became a bit too greedy I will analyze this incident at the end in the summary section. So the rexus is not continuous and one can of course choose to convert to manual SICS or ECC but I decided to continue with fake emulsification and I have been in a similar situations in the past and I am backing myself. The anticapsule flap is cut with a micro scissors through the side port and the flap is removed. few principles i follow when dealing in situations with incomplete rexus no hydrodissection and no nucleus rotation the nucleus is soft and so dividing the nucleus into smaller fragments is not going to be uh, difficult A vertical chop is performed and the first heminucleus is again divided giving this small pie which is pulled out of the bag and then emulsified in the anterior chamber this is a critical step i think because removing this one piece out of the bag helps in creating space within the bag which in turn will induce less stress on the torn edge of the anterior capsule the remaining two fragments of the hemi nucleus are pulled out of the bag and emulsification is done above the anterior capsule in the anterior chamber now since the bag is empty now i can rotate the nucleus safely and complete the emulsification process quite easily before coming out ovd is injected into the anterior chamber and then the phaco tip is withdrawn this important principle of never allowing the chamber to shallow helps in minimizing the chances of that radial tear extending onto the posterior capsule cortex aspiration is completed and now is the time to implant the lens although hydroimplantation is a technique of choice for me i'm using ovd to form the bag here and then place the lens i just didn't want to take any chance in this situation so that's the reason i avoided hydroimplantation as the lens is implanted it is ensured that the haptics are oriented perpendicular to the axis of the radial tear removing the ovd in such a situation is again tricky as i introduce the irrigation cannula under the lens i need to be conscious not to cause any sudden deepening or shallowing of the chamber because any change in the chamber dynamics can extend the tear to the posterior capsule So finally the OVD behind the lens and in front of it is removed the side ports are hydrated and eventually the case ends quite well to summarize so what did i learn from this case never to take anything for granted i became a little bit complacent changing the plan from a two stage rexus 
to the swirling or the spiraling technique was not the wisest idea. There was a swollen cortex right in this area and it took the rexus away. On the hindsight, I can find more than 10 ways how I could have approached this case and situation differently. But for me, the most important aspect would be the decision making. We need to take the right decision at the right time and having high degrees of concentration helps us to take these decisions better. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.